Pre-show music. This is the pre-show music. Pre-show music playing strong. Pre-show music playing long. I'm not holding that note out. That's ridiculous. This is the pre-show music. So you can relax and have a good time while you wait for pictures to appear. Pre-show music. It's the best thing in the world. Pre-show music, tell me what rhymes with world. Pre-show, pre-show, pre-show music, pre-show music here. I'm not repeating it, once was enough. All right. Well, hello and welcome. We are back into Dragon Age Origins after quite a, a while away. I This is going to be the first time that I have... Um, streamed and kind of continued with this let's play for Dragon Age Origins at, at uh, really at length. Um, I started the first installment a couple years ago at a at one of our annual live streams. I think it was um, Game Save maybe. And then I think it was a year later that I did a little bit more. Just kind of testing the waters, uh, seeing, you know, if people would be interested in this, uh, a let's play of this. But my... <clears throat> My audience is small enough that it's hard to get kind of good data on like, okay, you know, what would generally make some interesting uh, content and stuff. So uh, every once in a while I just got to experiment. And I was on the fence about continuing a Let's Play This or Not, so I kind of put it up as, a, as an unlock for the Game Save fundraising for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital this year, 2023. And uh, that uh, was unlocked. And so here I sit for the next six hours about to uh, continue my playthrough of Dragon Age Origins as my bitter old wizard, Elderast, who I like to play as anytime, tabletop or video games, that I'm given the opportunity to play as a full-on magic user, a full-on wizard. Um, and so let's, uh, let's get into it. And um, if you're watching the archived version of this, it's on a playlist, and you would have been able to refresh your memory. Oops, I got a... Do there we go. Um, let's see. Am I gonna have a problem with my headphones? I'm doing a weird crackling thing. Hopefully they'll be okay. Um, but I'll give a just a little recap for those that uh, maybe are watching this. Live or that, who, or who um, haven't watched the the other episodes for whatever reason, this is still pretty early in the game. I started out, of course, as a mage. So the the opening hours where you're actually at having that unique um, opening to the game are done now. Um, I basically got into some trouble <laughs> with the the circle of mages or whatever they're called the tower of mages the mage people i got in trouble with them <laughs> and uh the only way i was kind of rescued out of it was these guys called the gray wardens showed up and said hey there's bad bad stuff coming there's probably like a prophecy and stuff and we need this guy um because we think he you know might be a good Grey Warden or something. Um, so they take me away from the Mage Place, and they take me to where the Grey Wardens are gathering, but I need to go through this this sort of this initiation, this sort of proving or whatever. In fact, the, what's the quest called? It might even be called, like, uh, let's see. Where's the... Uh, um... Let's see, this this is the main quest that I was kind of looking at. Find three vials of dark spawn, dark spawn blood. That's these weird dark creatures, orc-like creatures, basically, that are showing up that haven't been around, I think, in a long time, and so it's it's an omen of bad things coming. I can't remember the rest of the details. I've played this game through twice already, so this is actually my third playthrough, but I've stretched out over years and my memory is crappy, but there's not many games that I have played even more than once, even among those games that I really loved. Uh, to do a, f a full second playthrough. Not just start into it, not just get halfway through, but a full second playthrough. That's a short list. 
um, very short list. It's I can count it on one hand. Um, so yeah, that's this. This is one of my favorite RPGs of all time. Um, but yeah, I still don't remember a lot of the details, which is great because it means I get to kind of like still have a somewhat fresh experience when I get back into it. And I've played it as a different class the first two times. First time I was like a fighter type. Second time I went with a a mage. But it's a totally different animal to play as Eldarast. <laughs> uh, let's see here. So, currently, find three vials of Darkspawn Blood. Uh, you have successfully obtained three vials of Darkspawn Blood. Once you find the Grey Warden Treaties, you can return to Duncan. So that's what I need to do. I need to mark this one as active. Um, as a second task for the joining ritual. That's what I, the joining ritual. Duncan has asked Alistair to find... And Alistair's one of the guys with me, I think. Uh, has asked Alistair to find a ruined Grey Warden outpost in the wilds. Supposedly it contains a cache of old and important treaties that need to be recovered. Okay, so that's what we're doing now. Since the last time I streamed this game, I've done a few side quest things. I'm generally, in this series, I think, going to try and stick to the main quests. I've got a list of what the, the main quest titles are, so I can keep track of that. But I'll probably offline... Um, go through some side quests just to make sure I'm nice and leveled up. I'm playing on the easiest difficulty. Um, I have... uh, I'll probably just keep it on the very easiest difficulty. I've played around with some difficulties a little bit in this, not going much above the the lowest difficulty. Uh, But that's mostly because I just want a a light tactical experience, not some uh, brain-burny thing. And all the more when I'm live streaming to multitask, I'm not good at multitasking, so like... Thinking out loud, talking. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Wrong button. How do I do this? There we go. Okay, this and... There we go. And Zot. And uh, let's see. Can I burn these dudes? Oh, I can't. Oh, wrong button. Dang it. There we go. Fry these guys. Oh, I got a couple of them. Um... Freeze him. Oh, man, these guys are on me. Where are my teammates? Uh, there we go. Oh, he's dead already. Okay. Is that it? Okay. I think I need to turn the volume down on my headphones a little bit. I can't hear myself think. <laughs> that shouldn't affect volume for you guys, though. Okay. <laughs> I might turn that volume up later. If I start kind of zoning out a little bit. Because a six hour stretch, it's not, it's pretty unusual. I can't remember the last time when I was not streaming and I played games for six hours. I mean, it's nothing like the 24 hours that I did for the, the game save marathon, but. I also, I'm off to a bad start in this regard, but I also don't want to overdo it with talking because I'm singing on uh, the worship team at our church tomorrow. And, uh, I don't want to blow my voice. <laughs> I'll let the, uh, I'll let the Foley effects do some talking for me now and then. I love me some crunchy boots. And even though this is an Xbox 360 game, which gets a nice, at least, frame rate boost on Series X, which is what I'm playing it on. I think it, you can get it on Xbox One as well. But even though it's, you know, an older game... Once games started being able to use, like, recorded sound files instead of, like, just cheap bleeps and bloops or whatever, like, from the SNES. Once once they got to, like, PlayStation 1 and some of that, the PC era from around that time and a little before, um, that that was a, a huge leap forward in my mind in terms of games. I could put up with low-fidelity graphics quite a bit, but, you know, like the old Baldur's Gate games, which this one's heavily inspired by. Baldur's Gate 1 and 2, you know, those games are dated as all get out, but they still have, like, real audio from, you know, like, real world Foley effects, and and uh, that that goes a long way for me. Um, hmm. Is this a quest item? I'm just taking it. What is this? A pinch of ashes. That's in my codex, huh? Better take a look. Uh, 
Sorry, I'm not going to read everything, guys. Uh, I'll see if there's anything relevant here. This looks like just kind of like a historical book. I don't think it's like some private note or quest related necessarily. Oh, here we go. Note is scribbled in the margin. Marcus, I think this is real. If you take the ashes I gave you, check, and scatter them over a pile of rocks on an overhang overlooking that half-sunken Tevinter dome, maybe Gazaranth will appear and give you a wish. He's probably going to appear and attack me, but that's fine too. If the battle takes you there, I think it's worth a try. Okay. We're definitely... Oh. Am I going to remember this? Does it get its own quest? If I don't do this now, I'm going to forget um, later. So I, I think I'd like to do this now. Earth... Oh, okay, overhang on the bank of a lake. Um, whoa, whoa, wait, 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 where was it? Oh, hang on, back to the bottom. Scatter them over a pile of rocks, overhang, overlooking half-sunken Tevinter Dome. Okay. Yeah, and I didn't get a new quest for it, so we're going to go look for that. So we're looking for the dome after I finish looting these bodies here. Ooh. Is that better? It is a little bit better, isn't it? Um, oh. Well, spell power of two. I don't understand. My, the current one, it, has a spell power of plus two. I'm not sure what's better. Well, you know what? It says it's tier two. I'm going to take their word for it that it is better. So let's, uh, let's not only take it, let's equip that bad boy. <clears throat> um, wait, are you saying I've already equipped that? I don't understand. Did I just auto-equip that? I thought... I'm a little confused. Oh wait, no. Here's the one, right? That was the, uh... That was one they said was better? Yeah. Okay. I think I'm good now. Now, let's see if we can tell from looking at the map where this dome might be. Oh. There it is. So just, uh, just north of me? Oh, and there's an X there. Does that mean something? What does the legend tell me? The legend of the map pin. Okay. Well? Oh man, look at all those traps. Don't get stuck, guys. Yes! What? I can't I wait to this disgusting water we shall go around <laughs> Okay, so games have advanced a little bit. Actually there's still plenty of games that just put conveniently invisible walls in places like that. Oh, here we go. This, this has got to be it. Yes, I seek power. Give me the power I seek. That's pretty unceremonious. Ah, uh, yep. What I tell you? Okay, crap. All right, that's right. I can pause any time. <laughs> I knew some dude was gonna show up and attack me. Your power is nothing compared to mine. Yes, that did go well. I might. We'll see. Maybe I'll dial up the difficulty a little bit as we get further in. I, I, I still need to get my sea legs with this thing. Um. Oh, no. I don't want to sacrifice magic at all. I'll take it. Um, can I mess with their equipment yet? 
Let's see here. Um, Davith and Jory. I'm pretty sure I'm not keeping those guys. I think Alistair is the one that I'm keeping, but I don't know that I have anything that's going to be better for him right now. Okay. All right. Okay, we're just auto saving. Everything's all right, everybody. <laughs> Nothing to be alarmed about. <laughs> oh. Herlock, can I not? Oh, I got to wait to fight and then I can pick up the flower. Desperation. Is that me? Is that my voice? That better be somebody else. I I just started playing Baldur's Gate 3 last night. Because they finally, in the patch, what is it, 3 update, added the kind of difficulty options that I wanted. Because uh, I don't trust Larian to, to give me the option to have a non- brain burning puzzle experience in combat. That's really like what how they seem to like to make their combat. And that's not what D&D is for me. Why did I bring that up? Um, oh, 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 yeah. Um, so I, I'm only about two hours in. But already there's some things like, oh man, I do not want to play this on PC because I, I just do not want to use keyboard and mouse um, or bother keeping my PC rig up to date for gaming um, I just want to play on console so mods aren't an option for me um, let's see and the reason I say that is they they don't have a lot of options for your character voice and I want a silent protagonist because there are no games I can think of other than perhaps Neverwinter Nights that have a voice that is what I want in, a, in my crotchety old wizard elder ass. Um, they have to go too middle of the road in all the voice delivery lines. And Baldur's Gate mainly just has protagonist voice acting in combat and in incidental things as you click on them, not in... It's, you're silent in the dialogue interactions. But even so, I'm like, I don't even want to hear his grunts in a voice that does not sound like the voice in my head. And then, of course, there's a narrator that you can't turn off, which is a whole different thing. Anyway, back to Dragon Age Origins. <laughs> Here we go! Oh. Well, well. What have we here? What have we here indeed? Are you a vulture, I wonder? A scavenger, poking amidst a corpse whose bones were long since cleaned? Oh, I'll tell you why I'm or smiling in a minute. Intruder. Come into these dark spawn filled wilds of mine in search of easy prey. It's not for the reasons you might think, looking at this character. <laughs> what say you, hmm? Scavenger or intruder? It's Claudia Black. <laughs> My, I mean, I totally forgot for a moment that, that we were going to be running into this character, and I am a, a huge fan of Farscape. Uh, it is my favorite TV show of all time. There's just nothing that comes close to Farscape. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I could totally get going on Farscape for a while. Uh, hey, Feral Inferno. Thanks for jumping in the chat. Um, so this would this game released after Farscape had already ended. And there was kind of a... a I, during this, in the mid to early 2000s, I feel like, with this and like with Battlestar Galactica, there was kind of almost a trend where like actors that were well-known on prominent sci-fi shows um, would start doing voiceover work here and there. Um, Ty from Battlestar Galactica did some stuff in Skyrim. He did some stuff 
in um, Mass Effect. <clears throat> um, and so they would start popping up, but like Claudia Black had a really prominent role as Morrigan. And I, man, because it was so fresh off of Farscape kind of having been done, I was just like, okay, I... I want Morgan in my party. I want to romance Morgan. I want as much Morgan as I can get because it's Claudia Black, and I was just missing Farscape. <laughs> but I did find her, you know, interesting. I guess as a character, and and the idea of romancing a character that's so like clearly, you know, evil and messed up. I think I romanced her in both of my playthroughs, and when I normally play Elder Asked, in other RPGs, I, he doesn't romance. He doesn't have time for that. He's not appealing to anyone for that. He's very single-minded. Um, I mean, I think early on when they started making romance options available in games, I took advantage of it. I was just like, oh, yeah, what's this? This is interesting or whatever, you know. But I think it's become, you know, I don't know. Uh, it's turned into something that doesn't appeal to me anymore in a number of games. And also, I... I just, like, I tend to roleplay characters that are very single-minded, and I'm like, I don't have time for romance. Are you kidding me? The world's gonna die, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway. Um, but I imagine I'll probably... I imagine I'll try to romance her this time around, but it might actually be easier, because I think in the past I tried to romance her as fairly decent good characters, and I, I think she might be more romanceable if you're a fellow evil character, but I'm not sure. We'll see. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Feral Inferno says, you'd think she'd have a better tan with an outfit like that. Yeah. I, 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 it must remain very overcast <laughs> in the world of Dragon Age. Okay, so what was she saying now? What say you? Hmm, scavenger or intruder? Oh, okay. Uh, I am neither... The Grey Wardens once owned this tower. It is a tower no longer. The Wilds have obviously claimed this desiccated corpse. I have watched your progress for some time. Where do they go, I wondered. Why are they here? And now you disturb ashes none have touched for so long. Why is that? Don't answer her. She looks chastened, and that means others may be nearby. Oh, you fear barbarians will swoop down upon you. Yes, swooping is bad. She's a witch of the wild, she is. She'll turn us into toads. Witch of the wilds. Such idle fancies, those legends. Have you no minds of your own? You there, handsome lad. Tell me your name and I shall tell you mine. Let us be civilized. Handsome lad! Well, I guess I'll take the handsome. See, I don't want to be overly polite. I think that works against me here. Uh, you can call me Elderast. And you may call me Morrigan, if you wish. Shall I guess your purpose? You sought something in that chest? Something that is here no longer? Here no longer. You stole them, didn't you? You're some kind of sneaky witch thief. How very eloquent. How does one steal from dead men? Quite easily, it seems. Those documents are Grey Warden property, and I suggest you return them. I will not, for it was not I who removed them. Invoke a name that means nothing here any longer if you wish. I am not threatened. Hmm. I don't want to be too. <laughs> I don't want to be too harsh with her. Uh. Dang. I should have saved before this. Part of me is like, I don't know. You know, there's so many different ways to justify choices with Elderast and with evil characters in general. That is one of the main reasons I enjoy playing as evil characters. Is because with an evil with an evil character, I can pursue what I most want in RPGs, which is to experience the, the the upgrading of my character. That's really the it's the mechanics of RPGs in video games that I find most interesting. And 
evil characters can just do whatever in the moment is going to serve that end of upgrading your character and experiencing, you know, cooler powers, better weapons, all that kind of stuff. Good characters, they sometimes have to hold back. And, you know, some RPGs will give you some XP for being a good guy and resolving the quest non-violently, but some won't. Um, and some won't give you that, you know, they won't reward you for that. And it's ultimately that upgrading, you know, that, that I really want to experience. And, <clears throat> and when you're playing as an evil character, you can justify pretending to be good in certain circumstances um, to get easy, more easily through a situation or to get on a character's good side and appeal to them. But ultimately in your mind, you're still evil and you're going to kill them in the end or whatever your ultimate plans are. But as a good character, you know, you can't uh, kill people for a little while to uh, get along with the with the bad guys. No, I mean, you're going to be like, uh, I'm good, and this is evil, I can't do this, you know. So your role play options are just a lot more limited, and you can be just a lot more um, <clears throat> fickle, I guess, in what types of dialogue paths you choose when you're playing as an evil character. And so um, for upgrading purposes, and then also sometimes I just like to explore what the developers wrote. Sometimes there's something that's suggested in dialogue that I'm like, huh, I wonder what their philosophical worldview is that they're bringing into this conversation. And I'd like to follow that thread because I think it'll give me more, just on a meta level, more information about what, because that always interests me because storytelling is just a major outlet, I think, for a lot of people's worldviews. Um, we see a lot of messaging and things like that in entertainment, but also on a more subtle level. You know, we, we see worldview being played out in uh, entertainment all the time. Um, but sometimes if I'm playing like a, a good character, I can't go down a dialogue path that I'm curious about. Whereas I can justify almost any choice playing an evil character. So, um, Eldarast, I mean, that's one of many reasons why I enjoy playing Eldarast. I also, you know, find some of the choices I can make with him funny and ridiculous, and so he's just a, he's just a lot of fun. Feral Inferno says, how about the anti-hero? Yes, that's, that's a great option as well. Um, for a long time, my default character in fantasy games um, was Vincent, and that is also the same name of a character in my Spirit Blade audio drama trilogy, which, by the way, you can get the legacy ed editions of the first two parts of that trilogy for free at spiritblade.com. But in that story, Vincent is very much an anti-hero. He's a flawed hero. He makes some bad choices. He goes down a dark path. Um, and he kind of goes back and forth over the course of that story. He can be found on either the side of evil or on the side of good. Um, and so, and also in RPGs, uh, video game RPGs when maybe early on the magic systems would kind of be complex and intimidating to me before I was really familiar with D&D &D rules um, at least on a base level uh, I would go with the more fighter type characters and so Vincent, he's he knows a little bit of magic but he tends to be that so Vincent, Vincent, Vincent was always like my default fill in the name Vincent you know for a while and I'll still do a Vincent play you know now and then uh, because likewise he very much he he can't he's not psychotic <laughs> like elder asked and so i can't justify literally any choice from a role-playing standpoint but elder asked i mean where the mood takes him he goes <laughs> so <laughs> he is a just that much more flexible but yeah that's that's a great option as well anti-hero okay let's see here um Oh yeah, that's right. I was puzzling over this. Tell us at once or face the consequences. Um, I'm gonna risk it. I'm gonna risk getting on her bad side. But so help me, if this results in like her leaving the party or not joining the party or whatever, uh, I'm not gonna do it. I'll I'll reload my save. Tell us at once or face the consequences. Because that would be a nice, weird romance for them to start out as like bitter mage rivals. Was my mother, in fact. Can you take us to her? Hmm. There is a sensible request. <laughs> I like you. Cha ching I'd Be careful. First it's, I like you. But then zap. Frog time. <laughs> put us all in the pot, she will. Just you watch. If the pot's warmer than this forest, it'd be a nice change. Follow me then, if it pleases you.
Greetings, Mother. I bring before you four Grey Wardens who... I see them, girl. Hmm. Much as I expected. Are we supposed to believe you were expecting us? You are required to do nothing, least of all believe. Shut one's eyes tight or open one's arms wide. Either way, one's a fool. She's a witch, I tell you. We shouldn't be talking to her. Quiet, Dareth. If she's really a witch, do you want to make her mad? There is a smart lad. Sadly irrelevant to the larger scheme of things, but it is not I who decides. Believe what you will. And what of you? Do you possess a different viewpoint? Or do you believe as the others do? And of course we gotta mention, this is Kate Mulgrew, um, who played Captain Janeway on Star Trek Voyager. So another example of, of, of stars of prominent geek shows kind of stepping into the world of voice acting um, after their their shows that they were known for are, were done. Well, let's see here. I believe you have something we need. They did not come to listen to your wild tales, Mother. True. They came for their treaties, yes? And before you begin barking, your precious seal wore off long ago. I have protected these. You... Oh, you protected them. And why not? Take them to your Grey Wardens and tell them this Blight's threat is greater than they realize. Man, already, I'm just reminded, I really like this game. It's such a shame, though, that they didn't have a more cohesive vision for the story, because Morgan, especially once you get to the DLC, becomes a very significant char character and I wanted to I guess play as my same hero through all three games but the second one not only do you play as a different hero but you play as a hero who is called Hawk by everybody it can be male or female but that's like your nickname your last name whatever and it's a totally different story and most of it takes place in a city I want to give that game another shot that's part of my long-term intention with this is I want to give it because it got some updates after my playthrough of it that I think would make the experience better for me and I never played any of the DLC which when I went and played um, Inquisition I discovered oh if you didn't play the DLC for two you're gonna feel a little bit lost and I did um, and now with the fourth one coming out maybe in 2024 um, I'm recording this on December 2nd, 2023, so we don't know that yet, I don't think. Um, uh, I, I want to, even though they're not very strongly connected, any of these games, um, I want to, I think, play through the whole series, maybe even Awakening. Because if Dragon Age Origins, if, if I just get sucked in again enough, I might just feel like I'm going to play Awakening, even though I don't need to. It's like a full-length campaign. <laughs> it's great. Uh, okay, sorry, I'm getting, uh, I'm rabbit trailing too much. <laughs> um, and why not, she says, take them to the Grey Wardens and tell them this Blight's threat is greater than they realize. Okay. What do you mean the threat is greater than they realize? Either the threat is more, or they realize less. Or perhaps the threat is nothing. <laughs> or perhaps they realize nothing. <laughs> Oh, do not mind me. <laughs> you have what you came for. Time for you to go, then. Do not be ridiculous, girl. These are your guests. Oh, very well. I will show you out of the woods. Follow me. That dialogue choice, her response to that dialogue choice was very familiar. I must have chosen that in both of the two playthroughs I've done already. <laughs> okay. So... The one thing I think I want to do, we've already warped back, I guess, to the camp. Got the treaties. I've got the blood. I want to do this Mabari Hound thing now, because it's another party member, and I like, I've always liked having the Hound. Faithful companion. I don't have to do anything to get along with him. He's just a guaranteed ally. And... Elderast is very practical in that sense. Um, I need to save, though, because I'm not sure which marker leads to what. Okay, let's see here. Um, 
Oh, that's, I think, the... Yeah, here's the hound guy, I think. The Mabari's stable for now, but not improving. Unless I get that herb I told you about, there's not much hope. Is this the flower you're looking for? Let me see. Yeah, that's exactly it. Wonderful. Yeah, give me a moment and I'll make this into an ointment. He looks better already. I'm sure he'd thank you himself if he could. How long before there's an improvement? I have things to do and a dog that I want. A day, maybe two. There's enough ointment for him to make a full recovery. Why not come back after the battle? Perhaps we can see about imprinting him on you. Ah, you think that's possible? Maybe. It's likely he understands you're responsible for curing him. Mabari are at least as smart as your average tax collector. Come back after the battle and just... Or take another look. Yes, yes, I think I shall. <laughs> Alright, so... Now we're doing the joining thing, I think. The big join the club ritual. Just do one more quick save here. So you return from the wilds. Have you been successful? We have. Good. I've had the Circle Mages preparing. With the blood you've retrieved, we can begin the joining immediately. Maybe we should tell you about Morrigan and her mother. There was a woman at the tower, and her mother had the scrolls. They were both very... odd. Were they wilder folk? I don't think so. They might be apostates. Mages hiding from the Chantry. I know you were once a Templar, Alistair, but Chantry business is not ours. We have the scrolls. Let us focus on the joining. Now will you tell us what this ritual is about? I will not lie. We Grey Wardens pay a heavy price to become what we are. Fate may decree that you pay your price now rather than later. I have no problem facing what is to come. I agree. Let's have it done. Then let us begin. Alistair, take them to the old temple. The more I hear about this joining, the less I like it. Are you blubbering again? Why all these damn tests? Have I not earned my place? Maybe it's tradition. Maybe they're just trying to annoy you. I've got... I think I have a spell effect going. I've got, like, this pig pen from Peanuts effect. <laughs> I don't know what is kind of, like, bubbling off of me, but <laughs> it must be some passive thing that I have running that I forgot about. <laughs> but, you know, I'm just gonna imagine that it is Elderass rank odor, because I always imagine him as a guy who does not take care of himself. <laughs> and everyone's aware of it. <laughs> All right, let's see. Stop yammering, you're giving me a headache. I only know that my wife is in Hyover with a child on the way. If they had warned me, I... it just doesn't seem fair. Would you have come if they'd warned you? Maybe that's why they don't. The Wardens do what they must, right? Including sacrificing us? I'd sacrifice a lot more if I knew it would end the Blight. Will you both shut up? Yes, yeah, Sir Knight. Try not to wet your trousers until the ritual starts. I've just never faced a foe I could not engage with my blade. At last, we come to the joining. The Grey Wardens were founded during the First Blight, when humanity stood on the verge of annihilation. So it was that the first Grey Wardens drank of Darkspawn blood and mastered their taint. We're going to drink the blood of those... those creatures. As the first Grey Wardens did before us, as we did before you. This is the source of our power and our victory. Those who survive the joining become immune to the taint. We can sense it in the Darkspawn and use it to slay the Archdemon. Uh, 
Let's get on with it then. We speak only a few words prior to the joining, but these words have been said since the first. Alistair, if you would. Join us, brothers and sisters. Join us in the shadows where we stand vigilant. Join us as we carry the duty that cannot be forsworn. And should you perish, know that your sacrifice will not be forgotten. And that one day, we shall join you. Davith, step forward. I have a wife, a child. Had I known... There is no turning back. No. You ask too much. Th there is no glory in this. I am sorry. But the joining is not yet complete. You are called upon to submit yourself to the taint for the greater good. From this moment forth, you are a Grey Warden. Two more deaths. In my joining, only one of us died, but it was horrible. I'm glad at least one of you made it through. How do you feel? <laughs> I still can't believe you killed Sir Jory. Jory was warned that there was no turning back, as were you all. When he went for his blade, however, he left me no choice. It brought me no pleasure to end his life. The Blight demands sacrifices from us all. Thankfully, you stand here as proof. They are not all made in vain. Did you have dreams? I had terrible dreams after my joining. Such dreams come when you begin to sense the dark spawn, as we all do. That and many other things can be explained in the months to come. Before I forget, there is one last part to your joining. We take some of that blood and put it in a pendant. Something to remind us of those who didn't make it this far. Take some time. When you're ready, I'd like you to accompany me to a meeting with the King. What kind of meeting? The King is discussing strategy for the upcoming battle. I am not sure why he has requested your presence. The meeting is to the west, down the stairs. Please attend as soon as you're able. So, really interesting. I'm trying to remember if there's some <clears throat> context I've forgotten that would answer this question, but, like, why did they kill Sir Jory? I mean, I think that the Grey Wardens are probably supposed to be... We're supposed to have complex feelings about them morally. But I'm thinking, well, why not let him go? Is Are the Grey Wardens, are they trying to keep their society or their whatever a secret i think people know about the gray wardens so why keep i mean once the dude knew why commit him to it to the point of killing him yes he drew his sword but duncan could have just as easily said well no never mind okay if you're really not into it go be with your wife and kids why do they why is there like no turning back other than that being kind of a cliche you know um so that's that's interesting. I don't know if that question will ever be answered or if it's just kind of a storytelling device they're not gonna they're not gonna justify. But let's level up. Um 
Alright, pretty sure I mainly want this to be about willpower and magic. I'll just give, like, two to each of these for now. Hmm. Um. I tend to want to do the damage myself and want to be awesome myself, especially as Elderast. As opposed to, like, making my teammates more powerful. I don't feel like I need to heal. Hmm. No. Oh, the Spell Wisp. I seem to remember liking that. Um, man, lots of options here. Um... Stuns enemies. Wow, there's a lot of options here. And that's what I really like in a spellcasting class in video games, for it to have that D&D-esque variety of spells. <clears throat> All right, I think I'll go with Stone Fist, and where does this go? Staff Focus. Yeah, I think I'll follow this tree also, Arcane Shield. <clears throat> yeah, that's good. All right, what about, oh, I don't have any other party members that I can use right now. Oh, it's the Rock Armor that I have active. Gotcha. Cool. Gotcha. Okay. Good. All right, hey, Gen X Grandpa. Thanks for jumping in the chat. All right, so I'm now a, a warden. Oh, they said the dog, I go talk to that dude after. Oh, okay, I guess we're at the meeting. <laughs> okay. Logain, my decision is final. I will stand by the Grey Wardens in this assault. You risk too much, Kaelin. The Darkspawn Horde is too dangerous for you to be playing hero on the front lines. If that's the case, perhaps we should wait for the Orlesian forces to join us after all. I must repeat my protest to your full notion that we need the Orlesians to defend ourselves. It is not a full notion. Our arguments with the Orlesians are a thing of the past, and you will remember who is king. How fortunate Marek did not live to see his son ready to hand Ferelden over to those who enslaved us for a century. Then our current forces will have to suffice, won't they? Duncan, are your men ready for battle? They are, Your Majesty. And this is the recruit I met earlier on the road? I understand congratulations are in order. I didn't have a choice, really. I suppose none of us do. But every Grey Warden is needed. Your fascination with glory and legends will be your undoing, Kalen. We must attend to reality. Fine. Speak your strategy. The Grey Wardens and I draw the Darkspawn into charging our lines, and then... You will alert the tower to light the beacon, signaling my men to charge from To cover. flank the Darkspawn, I remember. This is the Tower of Ishal in the ruins, yes? Well, who shall light this beacon? I have a few men stationed there. It's not a dangerous task, but it is vital. Then we should send our best. Send Alistair and the new Grey Warden to make sure it's done. If it's not dangerous, I can do it myself. No. It's best that you both go. 
You rely on these Grey Wardens too much. Is that truly wise? Enough of your conspiracy theories, Loghain. Grey Wardens battle the Blight no matter where they're from. Your Majesty, you should consider the possibility of the Arch Demon appearing. There have been no signs of any dragons in the wilds. Isn't that what your men are here for, Duncan? I... yes, Your Majesty. Your Majesty, the tower and its beacon are unnecessary. The we circle will of not Magi... trust any lives to your spells, mage. Save them for the Darkspawn. Enough! This plan will suffice. The Grey Wardens will light the beacon. Thank you, Loghain. I cannot wait for that glorious moment. The Grey Wardens battle beside the King of Ferelden to stem the tide of evil. Yes, Kaelin. A glorious moment for us all. You heard the plan. You and Alistair will go to the Tower of Ishal and ensure the beacon is lit. What? I won't be in the battle. This is by the King's personal request, Alistair. If the beacon is not lit, Tern Loghain's men won't know when to charge. So he needs two Grey Wardens standing up there holding the torch, just in case, right? Stop your whining! We have an important job! We must do whatever it takes to destroy the Darkspawn, exciting or no. I get it, I get it. Just so you know, if the King ever asks me to put on a dress and dance the Remigold, I'm drawing the line. Darkspawn or no. You have some odd ideas about the king. I happen to be quite fetching in a dress. Mm. The tower is on the other side of the gorge from the king's camp, the way we came when we arrived. You'll need to cross the gorge and head through the gate and up to the tower entrance. From the top, you'll overlook the entire valley. Where will you be? I will be fighting beside the King with the rest of the Grey Wardens. Again, at his request. We will signal you when the time is right. Alistair will know what to look for. How much time do we have? The battle is about to begin. Once I leave, move quickly. You'll have less than an hour. I know what I have to do. Then I must join the others. From here, you two are on your own. Remember, you are both Grey Wardens. I expect you to be worthy of that title. Duncan. May the Maker watch over you. May he watch over us all. Yeah, speaking of the Maker... Oh, Alistair disapproves of me. Alright, well, I, I think Alistair is destined to leave my party. <laughs> I think... I might have lost him in the last playthrough eventually. I think I'm going to lose him much quicker this time. <laughs> oh well. Um, but, you know, they mentioned the Maker, and that's also something that's been interesting for me to kind of watch, is like, what's the what's the worldview being expressed um, as far as monotheism? And uh, it's not a very positive one, I think, or at least they would... they present um, adherents of monotheism often in this game, especially those that are like part of the uh, religious structures, religious authorities. So like priests and stuff like that is usually or often hypocritical or whatever. So it feels like kind of, a, if anything, a commentary that's a knock on Catholicism or on Catholicism during, you know, a certain period of history. And of course, that's an easy target and almost kind of a cliche uh, in fantasy, so I'm not sure how much is actually intended as a commentary and how much is just, well, this is what you do in fantasy when there's a monotheistic organized religion, you know? <laughs> um, anyway, let me catch up on just a couple comments here. Uh, Feral Inferno says, you would do well at a Renaissance festival with that old English accent. Oh, thank you. It's, I, it's, it's, kind of, it's pretty inconsistent and knowingly so, in part because I'm just... I don't know that I want to commit him to being too much of a of a Brit, and so it's... I, I'm not completely consistent with it, um, but... 
Yeah, Gen X Grandpa, I mentioned that earlier, the black dandruff. I think that, I like to think it's elder ass stink. <laughs> uh, like uh, like uh, pig pen <laughs> from Peanuts, if you saw that. Um, but I, it's actually um, a rock spell, a rock armor spell, I think, that's just a passive that I uh, cast earlier and uh, forgot about. All right, so we gotta light the beacon at the top of the Tower of Vishal. King Kalen has asked you and Alistair to light the beacon to signal when the Darkspawn Horde have committed themselves to the battle. Terran Loghain's men will then charge the Horde's flank. Very good. So I'll mark that as my active. And what are these various markers for? Does this lead me to anything? There is nothing here. Why did they put an X here? Is that for... No, there's nothing there. That is weird. No, nothing there. Um, okay. I don't know what that's about. Well, I guess I'll just go to the quest marker. Well, these X's are so distracting. Oh, is that the dude following me around? Oh, no, no. That's the, the yellow mark is him, so... Okay. Oh, that's right. I was I was leveling up. What's this dude? So let's make that happen. Um, where's the level up option? Should be. Uh, oh, there we go. Um, I guess strength, dexterity, do I want to do constitution maybe? Yeah, okay. Um, let's see. Maybe I'll go with that. Uh, I don't think he's going to be a dual weapon guy. Hmm. Oh, he's only got one point to spend. I think I'll just put it into precise striking. All right. Very inspired by the Lord of the Rings movies at this point. And that inspiration waned as the series went on, but I loved it here. The plan will work, Your Majesty. Of course it will. The blight ends here.
Let's cross the bridge. Yeah. The Tower of Ishal. <laughs> Man, if you didn't like that, seek help, please. <laughs> That was great. For more chat about geek entertainment, answers to your questions, and news from the wider world of Christian geekery, get the Christian Geek Central podcast today on iTunes and other podcast services.